Welcome back, Joystick Justice League, to episode three of JJL Live. I'm your host, Mike Frusios, and this is my new one-hour weekly industry-wide news roundup podcast with, of course, the recurring segment, The Greek Speaks, at the very end where I actually spend about 15 minutes going a little bit more in depth into a particular topic or issue facing gaming and the industry as a whole. And uh, this week's should be no different. Quite a doozy I've got ready for you at the end of this podcast. But in the meantime, let's do the usual. Let's go through all the various sectors of the industry, starting with third party news, then moving into Nintendo and Sony and Microsoft, respectively. Starting off with third party news. Now, as I keep saying every week, you know, I'm trying to figure out the timing of the show, the format, when to get it out. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep it on a regular schedule, but you know, like I said, I, I work shift work. It, it depends. I also have a life too, so I have to make the show fit into my life. And I'm kind of glad that the show got delayed again a little bit this week, that I'm sitting here recording this today on Tuesday, because if I had recorded this yesterday, I might not get to talk about a major news bombshell in the PC arena that dropped this morning when I got out of bed and wow some exciting stuff for not only PC gamers but broadcasters alike especially myself being a game broadcaster on Twitch TV um, I just found that this to be incredibly exciting news something I've been waiting to hear for a while I knew it was coming and we finally heard it today so Valve officially announced today via press release December 2nd that Steam Broadcasting, the beta, has now gone live. So you can literally stop this podcast right now or keep it going because it's just audio and go onto your Steam right now. Go to your settings, go to account, change where it says beta participation to Steam beta update. And as soon as you start your next game, you are broadcasting, ladies and gentlemen. So let's explain how that works and let's explain and then we'll get into why this is important, especially if you're still kind of new to this whole concept of Twitch TV, of, of game broadcasting, of game sharing. You still don't really understand it. You're maybe new to the community and you don't understand the appeal. And I get that because most people, when they first hear about the idea of somebody streaming their gameplay session online for other strangers to watch, including their friends, most people especially a couple of years back, would, would say, that's crazy. Why would I want to sit and watch somebody else play video games when I could play myself? And we'll get in, like, I think at this point we understand why somebody would want to do that, but I'll get into it. But first, let's run down for all of you in the know who are currently broadcasting, who are currently particip participants within the community, you can get this going as of now. So let's explain, if you haven't read the press release, let's explain how this works. So as soon as you turn on your game, immediately, it goes into this this broadcast area. Now that's not to say that, for, like, as soon as you play your next game, that oh, you know, somebody's gonna watch me, you know, be a total noob at this game. I don't want somebody to see this. Don't worry, Valve's got you covered. There's basically four options, and, and the way this works is that when you're broadcasting, it's kind of like you're broadcasting into oblivion until a friend on your list chooses to watch your broadcast. That's when you're technically going quote unquote live. And what happens is when that friend on your list first chooses to watch you play live, and I think they'll be able to see this, uh, let's see here. What they do is they'll just go to their friend's name on the list, select watch game, which is located below the currently in game text, and they'll be presented with four options, which is only friends I invite can watch my games, and this is something you're going to see, not that the person watching your broadcast is going to see, but something that you're going to see. So only friends I invite can watch my games. That's option number one. Option number two, friends can request to watch my games, which is actually the default. So basically, anytime one of your friends chooses you on their friends list to watch a broadcast, they'll have to click accept. They won't just automatically be able to watch you playing games. Option three. Friends can watch my games, no problem. They don't have to click to accept. They can just click on my name, watch whatever I'm playing, and that's it. And then, uh, finally, anyone can watch my games. And that's the one I was, I was hoping to hear because without that option, it would be a very limited type of, of function. You, know, you, you would probably just share it with, with the, the depth of your friends list, depending on how big or small that is, and that's where it'd be. But thankfully, they are gonna allow the public option, and this is essentially gonna show up in the game hub, kind of like when you're on, for, for instance, on the PlayStation 4, you go to what's new, and anybody on your friends list who is currently broadcasting, it'll have a bubble showing what they're broadcasting, that they're live right now. You can click on it, 
go directly to their broadcast. It's gonna work similarly on the Steam Hub. Okay, so let's keep going over the details and then we'll kind of get into why this is important, where I need to see it going from this. So, going over again the particulars, the requirements for broadcasting is that you have to have a non-limited account, meaning that you've, if you've made at least one purchase on your account, you have a non-limited account, so you're free to broadcast, and also that your account is in good standing, meaning that it's not community banned, that you're not a, an excessive troller, and that you know, you're, you're good for the community. Supported platforms, basically at this point, you just need your Steam client or Google Chrome or Apple Safari, it'll run. Windows 7 and 8 are the launch platforms for the beta, and they have promised that Linux, OS X and Vista are coming soon with future updates. So again, let's 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 uh, let's talk about the reality of what happens when you press play. So when you start playing the game, only the game is visible. All right. So addressing your privacy concerns, are people going to be able to see the rest of my desktop or my PC? Not unless you allow it. So by default. What's going to be shown is only the game, and that's it. But there is going to be an option if if you if you trust people who are watching you, and if it's just a friends only session, you can enable it so that they can see your desktop whenever the game is not in play. So you do there is customizability. I like that they're 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 already thinking of things that aren't even really in the Twitch interface. And what else? No nos. Let's talk about some no nos. In terms of what's not allowed, of course, the usual offenders, porn, offensive, inappropriate content, but where's leaked content? And, and, and interestingly, they, they, they also include glitches and exploits. And we're going to get into this uh, because this is going to be a bit of a longer segment for third party news. I really want to get into another story about glitches and exploits that's kind of bugging me a bit. But uh, saving that for in the next few minutes, let's get back to this. So you can't show glitches and exploits of games or cheating, the usual threats of violence, harassment, racism, sexism, and bigotry. So this place definitely isn't 4chan. Copyrighted material, soliciting, begging, auctioning, raffling, selling, advertising, and referrals. Okay, so pretty standard laundry list. Again, I take issue with the glitches and exploits thing, but uh, we'll, we'll get into that a bit more when we talk about what's going on with Call of Duty and Activision. Uh, finally, in terms of what the to glean, we can glean from today's press release on the Steam Broadcasting Beta, is that unfortunately you cannot archive your broadcasts as of yet. Now, that's not a big deal. That's something that will get patched in later for sure, but there is definitely a workaround for that. So let's say you start broadcasting today, but then you have an amazing session. Like you you, you, you foresee, or at least you foresee that you're probably gonna have an amazing session and that you wanna store this. I would advise, at least for now, if you have something like Open Broadcaster Software or XSplit, just basically run Steam through XSplit as well, and either do a local recording, and I can't guarantee this because I haven't tried it myself. I, I literally read the press release before I started broadcasting. I may try this later, but I, I, I don't see why you couldn't simulcast. So while you're broadcasting on Steam, you could also be feeding that through XSplit if you have the paid version, of course, and you can send that to Twitch or Ustream or wherever you decide to stream. And, and of course, if you don't have the paid version, of XSplit, you can always do a screen capture and run audio through an external mic, but that that's a, maybe another podcast. Actually, you can you can even get tips from an earlier, uh, what was it, roundtable that we did near the beginning of Joystick Justice League about that. Finally, you can share your broadcasting by inviting friends to watch, but it doesn't mention anything about Twitter functional twi Twitter functionality or Facebook linkage or or Instagram or Reddit or anything like that. But it's still early. At least we've got it up and running now. Let's talk about this in a general perspective. So I, I really like the fact that they're taking the fuss out of broadcasting, which has already started to get easier in the PlayStation 4, Xbox One era. I mean, I started doing Twitch about two years ago, and, and there was a lot there, and there was a lot of hardware and software you needed to make work together. A lot of troubleshooting that needed to happen. A lot of things needed to work with other things like microphones, capture cards, you name it. It's 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 they've dialed that back. They've made it more main, they've made it, they've made it more streamlined in the PlayStation 4 Xbox One era. For instance, on the PS4, as you all know, it's it's as simple as clicking the share button, sharing your broadcast, and even with the recent PlayStation 4 firmware update, they've actually added a lot more customization options. But what I like is that Steam is making this even easier. It's like you don't even need a client. You don't need XSplit. You don't need a capture card. You don't need to click the share button. You are already sharing from the moment you launch your game. 
and, and like I said, the first time I read that, I'm like, wow, that that's kind of intrusive. Like I, maybe I don't want to share my gameplay. But the fact is, is that you constantly have a quick set of options to customize who sees that content and where. And and, and what I would like to see Valve add is, is just a nice quick pop-up interface where before you go to broadcast, boom, you click your privacy settings like you do on the PS4, and that way at least you're not constantly having to go through this cumbersome route of going through the options menu and, and changing your privacy privacy settings. Also kind of forcing, I don't, I don't like the idea of forcing your friends to have to click on your broadcast as well. I, I, I could see where problems can get, that could become problematic in terms of people trying to prevent certain users from accessing their broadcasts. I think it should be as it was traditionally, giving more power to the actual broadcaster to shape that experience. But it's still early. I like what they're doing, and even Twitch likes what they're doing, because already Twitter VP of Marketing, Matthew, Matthew DiPietro, immediately responded to the press release, effectively congratulating Valve on getting into this new method of video game social networking, and for just increasing the, so I'm not really saying this, but basically increasing the competitive nature of that market. And, and I like this because it's, now it's going to push Twitch to innovate even further. I mean, they've already started responding with with the the birth of the PS4, Xbox One streaming era in terms of, you know, like I said, streamlining the process, making it easier to access, uh, making it more customizable. But there's still a lot of work to go. For instance, on the PS4 right now, you still can't re really report, like there's not a really good way to say ban um, users who are harassing you or set up mods. I mean, there's still a lot of work that has to go into those native interfaces. I mean, fortunately, if you're if you're savvy with using your browser-based Twitch site and you and you command your whole operation from there, you you can still accomplish a pretty good broadcast and keep it under control. But at this point, the 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 average user of Twitch doesn't understand how deep that goes, and and to be honest, PlayStation and Microsoft haven't done a really good job of educating people on how they can control their broadcasts and avoid harassment and trolls. Um, so, that, and I think that's something that I, I I'm personally going to kind of try to do. I, I think maybe I'll start a new show like Tales from the t the Depths of Twitch or something like that, where I share my experiences of what can and can go right and we can definitely go wrong because I think I've made every mistake in the book on Twitch TV under my 24-bit heroes label and I've I've gained subscribers I've lost lots of them but you know you learn every day so this is still a new frontier and I, what I like I said before it's gonna force Twitch to innovate in terms of how Valve is simplifying uh, the interface now it, it remains to be seen because Twitch is so well established within the game community are some of the major Twitch personalities going to start moving over to over to Steam and leaving Twitch behind? I don't think so because again, like I said before, if you know your way around a capture card and your X split or your open broadcaster interface or whatever you use, there's always ways to simulcast your broadcast on Steam and Twitch or Ustream. So there's lots of ways to get around with that. Point is, is that in the larger picture, Video game streaming on Valve, whether it be Valve, Twitch, Ustream, wherever you decide to get your streaming fix from, this is essentially the future of not only social networking gaming, like the ability to have the virtual couch co-op, to, to meet new people who are interested in the same games you are, and to have a dialogue over the broadcaster or in the chat forum while you're broadcasting your video. I've had so many incredible experiences and met so many incredible people, had so many fascinating conversations based on just a random game I was broadcasting, something I said about the game or something I said offhandedly and it sparked conversation. And it's just like having your buddies on the couch next to you like we, like back in the NES days when we'd sit and you know troll each other or you know razz each other over a game and, and that's what happens but on a virtual level now. So. You know, gamers, it's it's a new way for gamers to meet similar-minded people. But like we've said many times before, it's the, it's the birth of, like, the new marketing for the video games industry. You know, gone are the days where we had to purely rely on a GameSpot review or an IGN review or an EGM review to, to get the final picture on a game. And, and as Gamergate showed us, and as it continues to show us into month three with the Gamergate hashtag that you know ethics in the mainstream gaming industry are completely under under suspicion right now 
and are, are falling by the wayside to, to online personalities, to YouTube personalities who we trust more. People like Total Biscuit, people like Boogie2988, people like Northern Lion, PewDiePie. Those are like the new gatekeepers and the people, the, the influential people who are gonna make or break video games. And, and it's not just the big people like Total Biscuit or Boogie or Review Tech USA, it's, it's each and every one of you and me involved. Like we all have a role to play in the fortunes of these companies in the sense that now Twitch has enabled us and, and YouTube as well to find out if a game is actually good beyond the corporate hype. We can see a real gamer like us playing that game online and telling us the bare truth. And even if they're, it's, it's like you get to decide for yourself. And, I, and I've noticed that I've sold so many people on rare and independent games through my channel just from them sitting and watching for 10 minutes and me giving a rundown and saying, you know, you gotta play Shovel Knight. It's it's incredible, it's one of the finely, finest, cr like, <laughs> I can't speak right now. It's one of the most finely tuned indie platformers of, of recent memory and it's, it's the price point is incredible. You gotta play this, support Canadian gaming. And they're like, cool. And I, and I just, I, and, I, and then I go over a bullet list of why they would like that. And, and that's so much more honest and direct than what we were used to previously reading uh, magazines or reading a corporate website. So again, streaming's not going anywhere else. Wow, this, this went uh, quite a long way. I've got about three minutes left. So check it out. Go on your Steam client right now. Try it out with your friends. Test it out. It's still in beta. Give Valve your feedback. I wanna see this be successful. All right, so I've got about three minutes left for third-party news, and I want to talk, there was much more that I wanted to get into, but the main thing I want to get into right now is the flip side of grassroots uh, gaming marketing, like what I was just talking about with, with players themselves promoting and hyping the games through their own channels. Let's see the dark side of that with some news last week that kind of burned up the internet with Activision declaring war on Call of Duty Advanced Warfare glitch and exploit videos. Uh, and, I, and I saw a few articles on this and I noticed specifically one YouTube user by the name of Pure Monsters and I watched the video. He actually, in the first part of the video where he's showing you some glitches and exploits, uh, well, or where they would have been because he wasn't allowed to show them anymore. He, he admitted to his fans that he had received a copyright strike from Activision uh, based on some glitches he had found in the comeback multiplayer map. And as soon as, I, I, I guess he must have been partnered with Machinima because as soon as this happened, Machinima issued a release to all of their partner broadcasters warning them that all content creators will be receive copyright strikes from YouTube if they post glitches, cheats, and exploits from Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Wow, what's a copyright strike? Big news, okay? If you're a YouTube broadcaster, that's big news, all right? This isn't even like a warning. This isn't even third, like a third-party match content ID warning that I received early on from a chiptune track that I used, and it was kind of like a slap on the wrist, but I was, a, I was allowed to keep the video up, and my, my channel's still in good standing. A strike is when you violated copyright in some in some really egregious way these strikes can can really hamper your progress as a youtube content creator down the line i mean even one strike will limit your functionality in terms of you know your ability to you know put up customizable thumbnails and do live broadcasts but when you get three of these copyright strikes you're finished you're done your youtube channel is deleted, your videos are deleted, it's over. Good luck trying to get back in. You'll probably have to go under a pseudonym or something like that. But I just I just don't feel like the punishment fits the crime. I think that Activision's being a little too hard on players. Let's read some statements first. I'll get back to my thoughts on this. I wanna, I wanna firstly give you the statements made by Activision in this manner. And I also wanna talk about a rebuttal that uh, Chris Healy of GamesNosh.com made to the situation, but first, Let's read Activision's statement to Eurogamer. Okay, so they basically said that we're excited that so many fans are having fun playing the game and posting videos of their gameplay. We love watching the videos ourselves. Occasionally, some folks post videos that promote cheating and unfair exploits. As always, we keep an eye out for these videos. Our level of video games claim, our level of video claims hasn't changed. We are appreciative of the community support in helping to ensure that everyone has the best playing experience possible, more corporate jargon. All right, and of course, Machina responded to their viewers saying, guys, this is what's happening. If you wanna keep your YouTube, I'm paraphrasing right now, but if you wanna keep your YouTube account in good standing, please stop submitting these glitch exploit videos and just play fair and accordingly. Well, 
Chris Healy of GamesNosh.com wasn't having any of that. And I'm going to read a couple of statements he made to kind of wrap up this, this section on third-party gaming and, and what I feel about this whole controversy around really Activision imposing some draconian measures in, in terms of punishing content creators for not towing the line. Chris Healy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote a few things he said on his article at GamesNosh.com. Activision, uh, in parentheses, have admitted to using their ability to claim copyright infringement in a manner not in accordance with its purpose. The ability to claim copyright infringement is not, however, a weapon to be welded in a manner which furthers the company's needs. This sort of abuse from Activision is a kind of censorship that has existed for years within the YouTube community, often used by small producers and video creators to silence criticism about them. And of course, he adds nicely here, as seen recently with the Zoe Quinn scandal, of course, wearing his politics on his sleeve. And I'm sure you know that Games Nosh is a pro Gamergate site, so there you go. And I completely agree to, to a degree. I think they're slightly apples and oranges in that situation, but I see where he's getting. Anyway, going on, he says that if you, he argues that if YouTube allows such a high profile case of selective censorship that takes advantage of a loophole within its rules to go unpunished, then the floodgates will burst open for everyone. This will be setting a precedent that the de developers, publishers, and content creators can pick and choose which sort of videos from the community get to stay, presumably ones that give you good reviews and praise and file copyright strikes against those which they deem unfavorable. Okay, so I see where Halo's going with this. I gotta wrap this up because we're going over time right now, but, um, I understand that it seems like First Amendment rights are being infringed upon here, the, the right to free speech, to free expression on YouTube, and like you're saying, if, if, you, if you allow this to go through, then who's saying other companies can't find other ways to abuse this copyright system? And I think I have a solution. We need a new system where it's like three strikes to a strike in, in these types of situations, because Activision, you have to understand, Younger gamers especially go crazy over glitches, okay? Now let's look at the pros and cons of this. Glitches are part of video gaming community. There's, a, there's, there's just a subculture of it. You'll never make it go away. And to, to give such a, a draconian fine, like a huge strike, based on something that may not have been, that may not have malicious intent behind it, it's, it's, it's just too severe. I think you need to, to warn these people because there are people, yes, that are trying to spread exploits and you know upset the balance of a multiplayer match. That's been a problem of Call of Duty for years, okay? Cheaters, exploiters, hackers have ruined every Call of Duty successfully after, year after year. You don't believe me? Go try putting in Modern Warfare 2 right now. Go to try, go try to go play a fair and balanced game of Terminal. It will not happen. You will have people teleporting around the map. It's ridiculous and I'm surprised with all that money that Activision never fixed these problems. It's as if now we've got our new Call of Duty game out this year. We don't give a shit about last year's game, so fuck it. You know, the, the, the trollers can have their day. So you know what? As long as they're never going to fix these problems with their games, as long as they're going to continue to allow glitches and exploits into Call of Duty, people are going to make videos about them, so slap them on the wrist. Three strikes to a strike. Three offenses, and you get an official strike. But not until you've com completed at least two or three of those glitch offenses and, and shown that you're developing a pattern. Because most people, if they get that notice the first time, they'll probably, most good hearted people will probably stop making those videos. The trolls are gonna test your patience and go for that third strike and they deserve to have their channels down. So there it is, I've gone long. That's uh, part one of JJL Live episode three, third party news roundup. Sound off in the comments, this is a very controversial issue. I wanna know what you think about this. Stay tuned for part two with Nintendo news and we're gonna be getting into uh, some new patents that are very interesting and also some other hot stuff too. I don't wanna give too much away. Stay tuned, we'll be back. Mike Frisios for the Joystick Justice League.